that he had on our community. The new amphitheater is a testament to his contributions and to Mr. Scarsoletti, the man. Here today is the Scarsoletti family, Anthony, Angela Schaefer, Anna Marie Scarsoletti, and Teresa Lobach. want to say thank you. Uh, like the mayor, I was really skeptical that this was going to come together. <laughs> and I think it took six years, six, years. six years to come together. This is a beautiful tribute. Uh, one thing I want to say is I think I'm the only one among us who actually was part of the high school band under dad. And one thing I want to say is, well, first off, as Cindy said, everybody who was in Northern Lehigh within the time span that he was here did play an instrument. It may have been a flutophone, but it was an instrument. And if you notice the feedback that occurred when she was speaking, that's what Smith Hall sounded like during the flutophone contest or concert. And anyway, uh, we've heard a lot about Dad as a community figure. I just want to say that he was strict, but you always knew what was expected of you, and he was quite willing to joke around with you when he got it, or come down on you if you didn't get it. One thing that I remember specifically, uh, those of you who were in the band with me might remember this, he came into practice one day, and we had all been in, in the, uh, uh, what is now the, high, the junior high school. We'd been in the band room, and he was late for whatever reason. But he walks in, he comes up to his, up to his uh, music stand, and he looks around and says, where's my baton? And everyone's snickering. And he's looking around, where's my baton? Someone in the band points up to the ceiling. <laughs> and he looks up at the ceiling, and sure enough, there's his baton sticking in the acoustical tiles in the ceiling. He shook his head. I think what he did was went and got another baton and he flipped that baton up in the ceiling. So we had practice without batons that day. But he was always willing to clown around where it was appropriate, but not when it came to competition. He, everything in competition was thought clear. Those of you who were in the band, remember how the band was configured coming down the street. Brass, drums, woodwinds. That was not by accident. He wanted to make sure that when we approached that judge's stand, the first thing that the judges heard was this wall of sound coming at you. And you don't do that with woodwinds. You do that with brass. So everything he did had a reason. It was all thought out. He was a leader. In every organization that he attended, he was a leader. Whether it be church choir, the Lions, the band, uh, the, the other bands, the lionesses, everything that he was involved with. That's what I remember of that. So, enough about that. Who's next? Terry. Terry, go ahead. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Woo! This is beautiful. I, we can't even believe it. And to have it after 11 years that he has been dead, I, I just... And I'm honored, we are honored. So we are so appreciative of all the effort and the planning, the fundraising and time it took to create this amphitheater and it, it, it took a lot of time. And these people behind me really, really, they did a tremendous job. We as a family know our father's accomplishments to the community, we lived it. I, we grew up with it. My mom was behind him all the time. She would give dinner parties for other band directors throughout Lehigh and Carbon County. He got together all of the band directors from those counties and created the county bands. 
and other bands, I can't even, it's too numerous to mention, but she was right there behind him. And we think it's wonderful that the Northern Lehigh community has honored him in this way. This structure that you are looking at combines his greatness with music. He was a great band's man. And there's a difference between a band's man and a band conductor. He, he knew how to get that sound out. He knew how to motivate his students. And yes, he was strict. He was very militaristic in the way he did things. And I learned from him with, with my job as a, as a teacher, you know, it's tough love all the way. This, um, this structure combines his great greatness with music, his dedication to others with the Lions Club, the Blind Association, and all of the bands in the different communities. And they also had him as guest conductor numerous times. We hope that this brings joy to the Northern Lehigh area with many cultural events to come. We are truly thankful and blessed that this community chose to dedicate this structure to him. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. We really do appreciate it and we are honored. Hello everyone, I'm the middle one. He called me the number two. <laughs> I'm Anna Marie, middle daughter. <laughs> well, what can I say? Um, I was the last one to leave the house and my brother and uh, Anthony and Terry pretty much said everything I wanted to say, so I'm gonna speak from the heart. Um, I experienced a lot of, um, some turmoil, some happiness, some peace in the house with my mom and my dad. My dad dedicated his time to the community, and I'm not saying nine to five. He got phone calls at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. My mom was very patient, and I, as the only child living there, left the room. <laughs> sometimes the phone calls were happy phone calls, sometimes they were kind of strict. Some sometimes the other person on the other line didn't like what he said. But keep in mind, everything that he said, he planned, he organized, was for the benefit of the people who live in this community and, and for families. He got calls from families. What should I say? What should I do? Um, he, he was always available, no matter what time of the day or night. He went to almost every single event. And my mom was a great supporter because she was very understanding. She was very patient with him. And I, I personally don't think he could have done what he could have done without my mom's support. So I wanna thank all of you coming here today. And there are a lot of you. And my dad is looking down right now with a big smile. And he, he loves to see everyone connect in the community. And that's what we're doing. And that's what it will continue to do. Connect in the community. We, we hope there's a lot of events, weddings, uh, birthdays, everything that will happen here at the park. Um, great, it, it's just, it's phenomenal. And I wanna say um, to my mom, her name is Angela. So we have Angelo and Angela. And the people who saw his license plate was Lola. Was there a year? 1952. 1952 is when they got married. So a uh, big testament to both of them. And um, he's, he's looking down with his sticker smile, and he's probably saying, well done. Thank you all. Once again, being the youngest is the most advantageous because they already said everything. <laughs> so I just want to say a little thing. And a mom and dad moved here in 1949. They were the first Italian couple to live in Slatington. And I hear rumors. I mean, I'm the youngest, so I wasn't there then. But I I've heard over the years how difficult it was when they moved here. But they persevered. And here we are. Everybody knows their name <laughs> and our name. So the only thing I want to impart is that those of you who are lucky enough to still have one or both parents in your lives, 
cherish that time. Because when it's gone, all you have are memories. And make sure they're good ones. Thank you all for supporting this venture.